I want you to just close your eyes for a moment and just put your hands in front of you. Just put your hands like this in front of you and just keep your eyes closed for a moment. And just silence, silence your heart, silence your mind. Just, just silence. Just if, if you have thoughts and, 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 and fears and worries and troubles, just, just silence it. Just say, be quiet. Just, just tell yourself and your heart and your thoughts just to be quiet for a moment. We just are tuning into the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence. That it's all about you. And that through you we give all the glory to Jesus and our Father. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I just want to start off with this scripture. It's in Psalms uh, 46 verse 10. It's a very well known scripture. But it says, it says, there be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will, exalt, uh, I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm most probably going to give you two teaching in today's sermon. So you got the double blessing today. Um, but it's so important. It's, I believe that is one of the most difficult things for people to be still. It is one of the most difficult things for people to be still. Because life will tell you, you've got to rush somewhere, you've got to be somewhere at some time, and you've got to be busy so that you can be important, and so that you can feel that your life is valuable and that you don't waste time. And if you look at things on the internet and you look at the system of the world, it will always tell you to optimize your time and to use it effectively and efficiently, efficiently. and you've got you to you do this and do this and do this so that you can reach success. One thing I've learned over my life, and, um, and I, as I've spoken to you so many times, is I don't try to teach you things that I just, I, I live it and then I share what I live because I see that it works. If you, get, if you don't get results in your life, you might as well change some things. Ne? It's really, sometimes we hold on to belief systems that don't produce any life, but we keep holding on to them <laughs> because that's just how we grew up. And sometimes we've got to let go so that we can have life. And so that's why Jesus says, if you let your life go, then you actually obtain life. And if you hold on to it, then um, you lose it because it's, you lose the effect of your life and, and what God can do through your life. But being still is really important. And what I've seen in my own life is that I know that we talk about tithes and everything, but I've seen personally when I tithe my time, God really redeems my time. God shifts my day completely different than the world's people's days. <laughs> I don't have to rush to get everything. I don't have to run around like a headless chicken. I don't have to rush this way and rush that way. <laughs> and I want to also integrate this teaching with the favor of God, because God gives you favor when you are in a position of rest. God really gives you favor when you actually rest, when you quiet your heart and quiet your mind and allow God's favor to fight for you. Allow God's favor to do things for you. Because we want to, so many times, we want to do everything ourselves. And, and I want to say to the person that is rushed this way and rushed that way, my life seems like a frustration to them because why aren't you moving as fast as I'm moving, if you, if you hear what I'm saying. But my results comes in peace, and other people's results comes through hardships and troubles. Does that make sense? And so in other words, it's, it's really important when I spend time with the Lord in the morning, I, I, I put out that time, and because that is essential to my life. Because if I give the Lord that first tithe of my time, of my day, now I don't see it as a, a, um, I don't see it as a law-based thing. I see it because I want to know Him. 
Because I want to know my father that actually gave his only son for me. I want to know him. So I really want to get up in the morning. I really want to. Sometimes it's more difficult. That's why I put my phone somewhere that I got to rush up and put it, put it off. Uh, that's how I set mine because I got to get up. Otherwise, my little one is going to wake up. So I've got some motivation to get up. And so I have to, when I get up in the morning and I have my time with him and I have my appointment with the King of Kings, he redeems my time. He redeems me not doing all the efforts of everybody, the stresses of the world, so that I can do things and get things done. And he brings things to me that other people have to work for. It's really two different lives. And God calls us into a life of his favor on, and of being redeemed in our time as well. And the same thing for your money as well. But the, the main thing is, is your time. Because a lot of people say we don't have time for the Lord, we don't have time to spend. But I want to tell you that if you give him the first portion, he redeems the rest. He makes everything supernaturally happen in the day. If you redeem, if you give him the first portion, and the rest is his. And the rest he redeems, he makes things happen easier, he makes you do things in rest, he makes you do things in comfort, and you move by the Spirit of the Lord, not by a spirit of fear. A lot of people are driven by a spirit of fear because they are afraid they're not going to make it. They're not going to make enough money. They're not going to make enough. Um, they have to provide, they have to provide, they have to provide. I want to tell you, and don't misinterpret what I'm saying, but the, God is our Father and He is the provider. And sometimes we've got to rest in the place that are, you are a child and He's the provider. And sometimes we want to be adults and God says you cannot enter the kingdom unless you become a child. <laughs> what is the kingdom of God? It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the kingdom. So, so if you are constantly in a place of I need to push, 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 and I'm fearful and fearful, uh, this, is bo uh, this is pushing me, then I don't enter into the place of being in a position of peace, joy, and love. It's amazing. It's amazing. I, I, when, when we just got here, I got somebody that uh, God opened this whole place by the favor of the Lord. It's God's favor. God's favor can get you further than you've ever got yourself. And so this morning, I want you to trust in God's favor for your life. Why? Because Jesus has given his blood so that you can be favorable. Favorable by man and favor by God. And Jesus walked and he grew in stature and in wisdom and with favor with God and man. And so what does this mean is you don't have to try to get favor from people by submitting yourself, by trying to be a nice person. You should be a nice person because the Holy Spirit's in you and his love, joy and peace is in you. But what I'm saying is you don't have to sell or compromise. You have to become aware of his favor on your life because Jesus has paid for it. And what is, the, what is the favor of God? How do I get the favor of God? It's through the gift of righteousness. It's through the gift of righteousness. Let's say, for example, this is a tracking, uh, not a tracking device, this is a magnet. And so God, through Jesus, in, in, um, in Corinthians 5.17, it says, uh, 5.21, 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says that he became sin, um, uh, that you might become the righteousness of God. So I mean, uh, with other, I've received this gift of righteousness. And this is a drawing device. This is a drawing device. It is not because of me and my actions that, I, that I've received the device. I've been blessed with the device. And my actions don't change the magnetic effect on the device. <laughs> Does that make sense? Your actions and your, your feelings don't change the effect on the magnetic effect of what it is. It is a magnetic effect of God's favor coming to you, God's favor, God's love, God's grace, God's mercy coming to you, not because of what you've done, but because of the, the gift. And because Jesus, because you are one with God, you became the recipient, you became a heir of God, means that you are, have become one with God. 
But sometimes what we do is we think the favor of God is you have to do something to get it. No, you don't have to do something to get it. You have to become aware of what you have been given. And so the favor of the Lord will, will open doors that you've never been able to open. And some of you need shifts and changes, and I'm here to tell you that the favor of God will shift things in your life. And for me personally, I had to become aware that God favors me and that I have favor with God and I have favor with man. And what it means is I constantly have a conscience awareness that there's a, 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 with, there's a drawing, there's a magnetic effect towards me of good things coming to me because of my Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is a privilege. Listen to this in Psalms 41 verse 11. Let me, let me give you a little bit of my testimony, just a little bit, so that you can just have an understanding. Is, is we tried, before we came here, we tried to do things in our own, in our own strength. And in other words, it's, but we were in obedience. And so in other words, it's, we went and looked at places according to our budget. And we got a perfect place, which seems right to our budget. You know, the budget. <laughs> and we got, a, we, we, we got to this place, and it seemed nice, and everything seemed fine. Um, and we, we had an agreement with the budget. And then the Spirit of the Lord said, you're not going to go into that place. This is not yours. And so we leave it. And so there wasn't other options. Sometimes not having options is a very good thing. It's, it's a blessing. <laughs> It's a blessing from the Lord. Because you can't figure it out, you've got to leave it to God to figure it out. You've got to leave it, you got to, sometimes, sometimes we try to do God's work and, and we fail miserably. <laughs> and so what was amazing is, in a moment, this property opened to us. In a moment, in a, in a moment. And so some of you are waiting for a something to change or something to shift, I want to tell you from the Lord, there's a moment, if there's expectancy, there's a moment that things are shifting. Maybe in your marriage, maybe in your finances, maybe in your business, you're trusting God. Some of you really, 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 really need some money for your business. And I want to tell you, God's favor will make that happen. God's favor will put you at the right time, at the right place, connect you with the right people so that things can happen for you. And what is amazing about God's favor, it, it comes through grace. It doesn't come through my effort. I didn't do anything to deserve it. I didn't do anything to, to uh, get it. It comes through grace. And when the good things are happening to me, it is amazing because the glory goes to Jesus. No, I cannot take any glory for where we are at this moment because the glory is Jesus. And it is His favor that opens doors. And He made the favor of God, really can get you further than your money can. And sometimes we depend on our money to make decisions, depend rather on the favor of God. And then you tell your money to do what it's supposed to do. Your money should never tell you what to do. The favor of God should open the doors, and then when God says you can pay for something, then you can pay for something. It's amazing. We, we didn't have dining chairs when we just came here. It was, it was actually so awesome because we sold a lot of things when we, when we travel, uh, as, our, as we moved, we sold a, a lot of our furniture, we came here, and so we didn't have dining chairs, and the Lord says, you will not buy dining chairs. Okay. I don't, it doesn't matter what people think if they come in my house and there's no dining chairs, Okay. And so if you have money, normally you just buy it because you decide this, this, this is what needs to be done. But the Lord said to me, you don't do that. And it's amazing, there was a supply for the dining chairs. The dining chairs came, and so there was dining chairs. And then the Lord gave us word, before, anything, um, before you're going to require anything, I will supply everything. And so at a, at a stage, it happened that... Um, a, a, Actually, recently, then the dining chairs moved out, and then the Lord blessed us with finances too, and then the God said, now you're going to buy what you want. This is a simple, this is just a simple, I can tell you other, other, uh, multiple other testimonies. But sometimes you don't have to buy for things. You don't have to buy everything God wants to make you. Sub and the amazing thing of being a grace receiver is you ne need to learn to receive. 
And sometimes we're too prideful to receive because we always want to be the blessed, the one who gives and gives and gives because that makes us feel good. But God really needs us to also be the, in a position of being a childlike person where we can be, Daddy, you are my supplier. If, God, if Daddy says you can use that money to buy this, you use the money to buy that. If Daddy says you're going to supply it, then you wait till Daddy supplies it. There's so much joy in the kingdom of God. It is amazing. But we become so serious about our lives that we, some of us, we really want to be children. Why? Because it was a worry-free life. I didn't have to do everything to pay all my bills. And so when we grow up, we move into this position and we feel we have to. And if nobody does it, <laughs> then it won't get done. No, 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 no. That's the story that you are telling yourself. <laughs> that's the way that seems right to you. But that's not God's system. God's system says you depend upon me and listen to my spirit and everything You'll move in peace, you'll move in joy, you'll move in love, and things will just happen. And sometimes you wait a little bit and things just happen. Things being obtained and being get, uh, received by the grace of God, by the Spirit of God, is so much more enjoyable than things being worked and toiled for. That's why the Bible says, look at the uh, lilies in the field, they do not toil. And some of us have made toiling an approved an approved object or an idol of our lives. We said, no, this is our... And so what I wanted to say is just when we moved into this property, somebody sent me a message. They said, you have to do something now so that you can provide for your family. You can't just live like on this favor. That is what it came down to. <laughs> I said, you leave me in my boat and you go and work for your boat. <laughs> Amen? If you want to toil your whole life through, and I'm not saying the grace of God is absent from work, but there's a difference being in a place of peace and love and joy every day and kindness because the Spirit of God is in me and because He has redeemed my time. I still have issues. I can tell you about them, but that's not the story of my day. The story of my day is being aware, constantly aware that the favor of God is upon my life. And when I start to, uh, to, start to get myself and I feel that I'm uh, in a position where I start to become sensitive to, start to um, worry or fear, then I, rem then I rem it, it's actually an invitation so that you can get back to the favor of God, to, to bring your thoughts back to the favor of God. Worry, fear, anxiety, depression is invitations for you to become aware of what you actually need to do. Amen. I want to read you this scripture. It's Psalms 41 verse 11. Psalms 41 verse 11, For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. I'm going to read this again. And then the crowd goes wild. <laughs> this is much better than the Springboks. Getting a, I almost said a goal. Um, much better than they scored. Amen. Psalms 41, 11, For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword. And so some of us really need to take a step back and say, Let God be God. Let God be God. If I don't know what to do, it means that that is not my space. If I don't have the answer of my problem, it means that it's not your territory. <laughs> when we were just coming into this property, somebody came to me, they said to us, because we are at this point, we are renting, and they said to me, but what are you going to do like in the future? Because obviously that was a short-term thing. They said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to do nothing. <laughs> I'm going to do nothing. Don't try to push me into a place 
of constantly worrying and you can't even figure it out by worrying and fearing. <laughs> Don't try to get me where you are. Leave me. I'm happy. Some, some space is not my space. If I, as soon as it cross the line where I don't know, it's God's space. I leave it to the Lord. I say, God, I let it go. It's not my place. You brought, you brought me here. I just obey. And I want to give you this scripture for some of you. You really, really need this. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, it says, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Sometimes God calls people into ministry or some way, and they are obedient, and it's like you have to pull a dog by its leash to get them there. And so God says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. It means that if God has a call on my life, I say, yes, Lord, and I'm willing and I will obey. And God, you got much better for me than I've got for myself. And I'm going to trust your favor to open doors I've never seen before. And sometimes, that is why I say it, it's sometimes a good place to not have options and not have answers. Not for, there's a lot of answers, but I, what I mean is that I don't have to have an answer exactly for, for the, the situation or the condition or the problem that, I've, that I'm in. It's sometimes good. Because I can just say, Lord, you will just make it work for me because your favor is on me. You go ahead of me and you make the mountains flat. I don't have to make them flat. I don't have to hire the bulldozer. You're going to make them flat, Lord, and I'm going to follow your spirit. When the spirit says, turn this way, I turn this way. When the spirit of the Lord says, turn this way, turn that way. Because it is amazing to not always be in control. <laughs> it's amazing to not always be in control. Why? Because you become like a child. You let the father do what only the father can do. You let daddy do what only daddy can do. And how do I apply this in my everyday life? I, I have my time with him. He redeems my day. In that time, he speaks to me about my day, about my situations, and it, I can make decisions because he told me where to go and what to do. Amen. How do I make decisions? How do I rush day after day and I rush it with the wisdom of man? You can't see around the corner. He sees around the corner. You don't see the future. He sees the future. It is really just between us. It's really good to follow him. <laughs> it works. It's really good. It's really, really good. But when you follow him, you don't get a, a, a... So many times people get... God instructs them in a moment, and then they just rush into the thing. You don't rush into things. You constantly... My priority is not what I've got to do. My priority is Jesus. Jesus knows what you've got to do. He, he's, not be, he's not sitting behind the wall and sending you to work and make you build your business. No, he knows exactly what needs to be done. He knows exactly how you need to build your business and how you need to build your family and how you need to build everything you need to build. He knows exactly. And so when I make him priority, I'm not deceived by my day. I'm not deceived by my money. I'm not deceived by the questions and the issues and the anxieties and the fears. I'm not deceived. I'm not distracted. Why? Because he will answer me. Because there's, a, there's amazing scripture, Psalms uh, 63 verse 5. I think it's 63 verse 5. Let me give it to you. It's amazing, amazing scripture. And the Lord keeps reminding me. Um, I just want to see if I've got it here. It says that your loving kindness is always before me. Your love and kindness. So uh, um, Psalms 26, so 26 verse 3. For thy loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. His love and his kindness is constantly before me. And because God has given me a revelation of his love for me, and that's why I want to really encourage you, ask the Lord for a fresh revelation of his love for you, because that it really makes a huge difference. It changes your life, not only for the better of you, but for the better of everyone around you as well. Amen? 
Sometimes when I get frustrated, my wife will tell me, just go and spend time with Jesus. <laughs> and then I don't argue because I know what the truth is. I need Jesus. <laughs> because Jesus keeps me, he keeps me straight. Hallelujah. And so his loving kindness is always before me. So I constantly refer that God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. He's kind to me. He wants to bless me. He wants to favor me. Because the Bible says God delights in the prosperity of his servants. The Bible does not say God delights in the poverty of his servants. God does not say that he delights in the sickness of his servants, of his people. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. You won't find that in the Bible. In the Old Covenant, yes, you can find something like that. But he doesn't delight in it. In the New Covenant, under the blood of Jesus, God delights in the prosperity of his servants. That means, it's in, in 3 John 1 verse 2, it says, Paul, Paul, um, said, ach, um, it says that, that I pray that you might prosper and be in health as your soul prosper. Prosper in all things. That means that you prosper in your family, that you prosper in your joy, that you prosper in peace, that you prosper in your finances, that you prosper in your business. And so the favor of God does not make me double-minded because the favor is God want to be good to me for His glory. Because once things are going well with me as well, not saying that we don't have troubles or tribulations, we do have them. But we can overcome them. And we have authority over them. But some of us, I just want to read this again to you. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, it says, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So following God and obeying His voice really will lead you to better places. And opening your heart to trust Him and to depend on His favor really will make a huge shift in your life. I want to give you this, Psalms 44 verse 3. Oh, uh, Proverbs 3 verse 4, it says there, So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. Psalms 5 verse 12, it says, For it is you who blesses the righteous man, O Lord, you surround him with favor as with a shield. As with a shield. And it's amazing in Genesis chapter 6 verse 8, I want to also give you this. It says there, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. That favor that, God, uh, that Noah found in the eyes of the Lord, actually God gave Noah a plan that when he obeyed the plan, the plan actually saved his life. <laughs> Amazing. And so our obedience will take us to better places. And, 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 and the Lord said to Elijah, you've you got to go somewhere. You've you got to go somewhere. The ravens will feed thee there. And so if Elijah stayed on the same place, and I'm talking about obedience, if Elijah stayed at the same place, he would have died of hunger even if God loved him so much. He had to move. He had to move where God sends him. And sometimes <laughs> we have this thing, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. <laughs> Don't move me. I've been here for a long time. We had family actually in our ministry in Bethlehem that, that blessed, they, they, they tithed out of their business. They tithed out of the business into, into our ministry and it, um, it, was, it, was, it was big. And so what happened is it, it, the business just kept picking, picking, picking up, 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 up. And there was a time that suddenly something shifted. And there's a lot of shifts that came, and they couldn't understand, but we are tithers, Lord. Why? What's happening here? And so there was theft and uh, other stuff that was happening in the business, and I'm not, I don't actually plan on saying this, but I want to give you this, because this is what the Lord leads me to say. And so it, eventually it came to a point where they said, Lord, if, if you don't show us what to do, uh, this is it. And so in that time, God started to speak to them about a move, about a move. And they, they actually uh, moved to another place. And when they got to that place, but it was for me as, as really a challenge because I said, Lord, but I, I really need to get this thing because uh, the tithing really releases so many things. It releases so many blessings. 
uh, but what's happening here? And so for, a, for quite a few months, I had to struggle in, in me, and they phoned me after a couple of, I think it was just a month or two months or, or a few months. They phoned me. They said, listen, I want to tell you something. Uh, they said, I was at a salon. I showed the, the, the person who was doing my hair, I showed them a picture of what we are doing. And, I, and she, she left. And as she left, another person walked in and she, that, that person said, we need somebody to do or renovate our whole property. And she said, but here's a lady that just showed me a picture of this property, oh, of what they are doing here, take a phone her. And so they, the, the, the lady of the property phoned them. I hope I'm, I'm actually making sense what I'm saying. But the lady of that, uh, that needed the work to be done, they phoned my, that, my, that family, the same family that sowed so much into our lives. They, they phoned them. They said, listen, come and give us a quotation. And there was three people that's quoting. And so the, um, the, the, when they phoned them and said, you've got to work, you've got the job. But it was the largest contract they've ever done. Ever, 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 ever done. And so that is actually the, when the, 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 the property owner said to them, listen, I had a dream that I'm giving the work to you. You weren't the cheapest, but I had a dream that I'm giving the work to you so you can start. And so faithfulness and obedience and the favor of God can really do things in your life that you have never. That is why the Bible says God can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or imagine. And so they had to move to go to the promised land. They thought they were in the promised land. They weren't. And they were doing really well. And so they had to move. There was a shift out of obedience and out of that place of having to do what God is took. I've never thought they will ever leave Bethlehem. And how, the God, how God prospers them. And from that one contract, they got another big one that's even way bigger than that. And so what I'm saying to you is we don't follow God for money. That would be really unwise. You follow Jesus because you love Jesus, and God will put you at the right time, just like he put them in that salon at the right time, at the right place, for the right things to happen to you. And the favor of God will make people dream about you, and shifts will happen. It's amazing. It's amazing. The favor of God will put you in places you've never thought you can. But we have to depend on that favor. Because sometimes we listen to our own, uh, we listen to our own standing, our own state. We look at our own finances and we think we can do this, we can do that, we can do that. You can, you can. And, and God still loves you. But there's something, there's a different kind of peace and a different kind of rest when you move with Him. When you allow Him to, to tell you uh, and, 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 and command your steps. Amen? I want to give you this, Romans. I'm going to finish off with this scripture. Romans 8, 31 to 34. So what does all this mean if God has determined to stand with us? Tell me, who then could ever stand against us? God is never, ever against you. Never. It's never against you. But he is in the protection business. He's in a divine protection business. Sometimes God will call you out of something or away from something or someone, not from your wife, <laughs> not from your husband. Amen. This pastor said that God's calling me. No, 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 no. Sometimes God calls you out of a situation because he knows in the future what's going to happen in that same place. And so God's not taking away from you. He's adding to you. God does not, it's not in the business of God gives and God takes. That is a lie because we are not under the covenant of the old covenant. God protects me and God blesses us and God does discipline. But let me add this to my sermon. When I, I don't walk around waiting for opportunity to, to discipline my two-year-old. 
Sometimes we have the wrong perception of God. We think God is waiting for the moment that you overstep the line so He can discipline you. And the discipline of the Lord is through His Word correcting our stinking thinking because our stinking thinking leads to death. <laughs> Amen? So if our thoughts align with His thoughts, what the Word of God says about us, we see life and we enjoy life. I love it when my daughter enjoys her life and just being herself around me. Does that make sense? And so I want to ask you from the Lord, to, 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 if you need to change a little bit of your perception of, because so many times you tell people, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, and then they have, yes, but God disciplines. No, 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 that but. We need to get the but out of the way. Eh? Yes, He does discipline, but that's, that's, that is a loving way, and that is most probably on my way of thinking and on pride. In the sense of, he will, he, will, he will show me this is, what, this is what's happened, but He won't keep it against you. Does that make sense? And so we don't walk, I don't walk around waiting for God to discipline me. God actually speaks to me when He says, this is, this, this is a moment of discipline. And I'm like, yeah, I can feel that. But it's nothing that to hurt you or harm you or take from you. And so a lot of people don't trust God with their things or even with their family because they think God will take from them. That's a lie. God will never take from you. The only one that will try to take from you is the devil. And so you've got to stand in authority and say, devil, this is my ground. You've got to leave. Get off my marriage in Jesus' name. You don't have the right and permission to bring thoughts against my wife or against my husband or even against myself in Jesus' name. I will live and I will enjoy the goodness of God and I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm sure you got five, five sermons today. Amen. The amount of grace. To God supplies grace. God is backing you. God is for you. I don't sit in the morning wondering if He's going to discipline me. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is not, that's incorrect. God will discipline me and I will know it is such a form of love that I will know that life will spring forth. It never comes through sickness. It never comes through disease. It never comes through taking things away from you. So if you feel that the, uh, something is moving or shifting in your business, I want to ask you from the Lord to really, to really pray to God and say, Lord, what is the source of this issue? Lord, show me the source of this issue so I can address this issue because I have the Spirit of God to command the mountains to move. God, move my mountains. Now you move your mountains. <laughs> I have my Spirit in you. Hallelujah. And so we've got to become aware. But if I don't read the Word, it says here, yeah, who can be, if God is for me, who can be against me? Okay, so if God's favor is covering me and surrounding me and protecting me, God says His presence is behind me to protect me. His presence goes before me to make the mountains flat. So if God is in me to protect me and to cover me and to bless me, I'm not, I'm not into blessing, blessing, blessing. My focus is just Jesus. I love Jesus. I don't, I don't, I'm not loving the blessing. I enjoy the blessing because the blessing is there. God says, I, will bless, I, I give you all these good things for you to enjoy. Once your focus becomes the blessing, something's wrong. Hallelujah. Once money becomes your, uh, your focus, something's wrong. You're off track because it will deceive you. It will have a voice into your life. Here's another one. Hallelujah. We really trust that God's grace, and wherever you feel, and this is, this is number seven, wherever you feel that you're not good enough or you're not making it, His grace is really there to over, to super exceed your your place of failure. If you feel that you fail as a husband, His grace, rest in it. Say, Lord, I'm going to rest in Your grace, and His grace will super exceed your, your own efforts. If you feel that you don't make it in your business, say, Lord, I cannot, I cannot, I don't know what to do. I'm going to rest in Your grace to guide me and to fight for me. Then you rest, you let it go, and let His grace 
super exceed where you feel you short. Amen? Amen. It's like that, that one that... It's like that uh, there was a clip. I actually wanted to find it, but the guy came to heaven and he says, but uh, what is, uh, the, the, the angel of the Lord or one of the, one of the um, saints or somebody stood there and they're like, okay, but why should you go in? No, this, I've done all of these things. And he says, no, you can't go in. And the other person came and he says, why, why um, should I allow you in? And he says, I don't know, but it's only by grace. And he says, okay, you can come in. Okay, so for every place in your life where you feel disqualified or because God's grace and God's favor qualifies you. It really qualifies you. You don't have to, you don't. My wife, in the middle of COVID, in the middle of COVID, when we really needed some finances, because my business, I was in business and in church, so everything like, and somebody, we got a phone call and says, listen, um, we need somebody that can work online from Johannesburg or Pretoria. And the Lord spoke to me immediately, say, she, Yulani's got to apply. And it's a company in the UK. It's overseas. It's an online company. And so what's amazing is the online industry just boomed. Completely boomed because nobody can go anywhere. Now you can't go to the shops to shop. You shop online. And so in that moment... In that place, God just opened a door. And the lady, the, the, the lady that said to her, okay, wait, I'm going to, she said, listen, you're going you're gonna to tell them you want this amount per month. We, if we out of our flesh, we would have said, we would have settled for half of that. God's favor came and it introduced, it says, you've got you to go for this. And we're like, okay, yes, yes, yes. Yes. And at that point, it was a lot of money for us. Because we, it was like supernatural. But she wasn't qualified for the job. They didn't even do an interview with her for the job. <laughs> She's seen in her CV, she's done, she has done things in the industry, type of industry, but nothing compared to that. When they had a call over the phone with her, she doesn't even know what they are saying. She like Googles everything. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? And there was multiple crying evenings. But I said to my wife, you know what? What's amazing is that they pay you every month to be in university. <laughs> and so sometimes we've got to change our perspective of life and where we are. Because there's a lot of people here with a lot of money. But I can talk you so that you are so not satisfied. I can have a conversation for you and I can make you unsatisfied with everything you have. And there's a lot of people here that doesn't have anything or very little and I can have a conversation with you so that you are so grateful for everything you have. Every nothing that you have. Sometimes we've got to change our perspective of life and of where we're at and of what we have. But I want to ask you from the Lord to see the value and what is important. See the value of what is important. See the value of life. See the value of life. This does not live. Do not put this above your family. Do not put this above Jesus. Do not put this Above life. This is a awesome. These tools are awesome. Tools are awesome. But they can also be a distraction. I don't know in which amount of sermon I am now. <laughs> but do not be distracted by things that is not really valuable. Even if it draws your attention and it draws your affection and draws. Don't be distracted by things Put your family, put God first, put your family second, and then you are there. Because there's a lot of people in when they are older, if they get there, they wish 
they actually spend more time with their families. They wish they invested more into their wives. You know what the amazing thing about your wife and your husband is? It is a commitment that you've made unto each other so you can invest your whole life into them and then you reap all the rewards of what you've invested into. And the rest will flow out of it. You don't have to worry about everything. Jesus said, one thing is needed to sit at my feet, and that is so true. But praise God, I don't have to date every day. Amen? <laughs> I've been there. It's not nice. I've been in the youth. I dated one, the other one cries because I don't date them. And then, I, and then they, she drops me, and then I take this one, and then I take this one. You can't invest like that. You can't invest. See the value of what you've been given. Change your perspective. Change your eyes. Ask God to see you through His eyes. Ask God to see your wife and your family and the things that is really valuable through His eyes and appreciate that and keep your life in a... Why does when you hear somebody died, you suddenly love your wife more or your husband more? I really hope it's like that. Why do you... When somebody dies close, you value people. Why? Because there's been an awakening. And so we can ask God to constantly keep us in this awakening. I'm not saying let everything just go, because it's important that you steward all things that you've been given. But you can ask God for wisdom to steward things better, in a more peaceful way, which will prosper you in the long run. Because your latter days are better than your former days. And I declare this over every person in this place, that thank God that you are here today. Thank God that you are alive today. Thank God that He saved your life. And He saved my life to be here. For, for those of you who don't know what, what we have been through, He saved us. He saved my life to be here. And I'm ever grateful that God has lifted and brought us into this position. Gratefulness, gratefulness. And that is what grace does. It just shows you that God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. God doesn't have a flower that says, I don't love you. He does not have one of those. He only has love you, love you, love you, love you. I can never stop loving you. I will love you even if you don't love you. I will love you even if you don't like me loving you. I will still love you. And you won't change the joy of God even if you like being grumpy. <laughs> You can't change Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's, let's close our eyes and we just honor Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are such an amazing Father. And we love you, Father, because you first loved us. And because, thank you, Father, for fresh revelation for every person in this building. Fresh revelation of your love for them. Fresh revelation, I pray to every person, of your favor upon them. Because you favor them, God. And I pray that they will be conscious and aware when they walk out here that they have been dressed with favor. It is the favor of God, which there's no disqualification. But the favor of God qualifies you. It, it positions you because it's you that is doing that, Jesus. We thank you. We honor you. We love you. And we appreciate the life that you've given unto all of us. We honor you, Father. We thank you. For, for the word, and I just pray that every person will, who, and nobody will walk out any sense of being devalued or, uh, or condemned, but every person will know that I am loved. I am appreciated by God. I am valued by God. I am so favored by God, and you love us, Father. And Father, I thank you that you make people aware when there's a lie that comes into their hearts and into their minds that produces a feeling of disqualification or condemnation, Father. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you lead us into life and life in abundance. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you.